Hello and welcome. These are horse racing selections for Wednesday the 2nd of October. I am Flat Cap Callum and I'm hoping you are all very, very well. All right, we're playing Wednesday. We had a day off Tuesday, um, but Wednesday is better. Um, I, mean, I was hoping I might even get a bit more stimulants, but I have got five five horses hit the star system. So we've got the, the five horse bet that you'd have seen a couple of times since I've been back. Um, where we've got wind doubles, each way trebles and four folds and five folds and whatnot. But um, 12.50 is the stake, five horses, one at Bellius Town, one at Nottingham, an interesting meeting in Nottingham, but only one horse uh, and three at Kempton. Um, yeah, I was hoping for a bit more at Kempton, but I'm, 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 I've got, I'm good, got three. So we've got five horse bet. Four of them are pretty skinny by my standards, not by most, but my standards. And we've got one, one at a bigger price and that is absolutely... Uh, got an element of risk involved we'll get to that so uh monday how did we do monday just a very tiny loss it would it would depend you might get a, you know a few pence more loss depending on what price you got but um we only had this bet as a goer because the other one got abandoned so gainsborg um i think went off at 14s and i got 25s with a 10p rule for um I mean, yeah, the price the price came in on that. So I don't know how many folks got got the twenty five. It was available on three or four bookies at the time doing the video, um, but by the morning that price had gone in. Well, had gone in a lot, and then it retracted that back out again. So, um, yeah, that that was a, a, a decent run. It didn't it didn't get to front to be honest. And that's where I was hoping it would get to, but it still uh, still plugged on. Um, to to fight out for second, and then Tasmanian Legend was a real frustrating one because. I think D-Man put something in the um, in the comments, which is which is very valid. Um, which was basically about that horse drawn won. What you don't really want to get is stuck on the rail at Wolverhampton, but likewise you don't want to get stuck on the the wide outside either. I'd, I'd rather be stuck on the rail than the wide outside. Unfortunately, when we got to the straight, I don't know what what the jockey was doing, but there was a 50-50 move. Do you go left nearer to the rail and right further out and went towards the rail and the horse that came in the slot behind it went on to, to place. So, um, yeah, I, I think we weren't on the right part of the track at the end of the race. Um, so I'd still be looking at that horse next time. But, yeah, it was just a place on Gainsbourg. So um, it was 4.50 on that bit of it. Uh, and it was like 4, 4.14. I think it was 4.14 back, something like that. Um, so yeah, four, four, 13, four, 13, four, 14, something, something of that ilk. Um, it was a few pence loss, um, because then we had, uh, the bet that got abandoned at Windsor and I was going to flag something on that. Uh, yeah. So we had this bet at Windsor, we all got abandoned, which is a bit of a shame because I quite like the bet, but, um, that interesting, that horse, that hiatus at 355 Windsor, it did go and run at Bath, uh, today. So this time making this video Tuesday. And I was, I was waiting for someone to, to ask me in the comments, like, why haven't you put it out? It's interesting because cause I, I still read it in the same way that I read there, which I thought that that was going to go down to about half the price. Um, I felt like it was it was about marked up the night before, big, bigger than that for the bath race. But I still felt it was going to go down. But what I didn't like at the bath race is, A, it never run at bath. Uh, and it's quite a specific track bath. Not all, not all horses are going to like it. And you, you can be a bit rough and tumble at points as well. Um, so you do get a few hard luck stories. Also, conversely, it might sound a bit weird because some people are like, well, that's surely a good thing. It was actually a class five race, whereas Windsor was a class four race. And the fact it was a class five race actually put me off the horse. Um, and some people would say, well, surely dropping down in class, um, if it's if it's a decent horse, that actually makes it's got a better chance. Yes, in one respect, but in the other respect, from stats I keep, it also increases your level of inconsistency of result. Um, the lower class you do so yeah the, the, those two non-bar things they were the things that basically stopped it hitting star rating when it ran on uh when it ran on tuesday uh, whereas on windsor in a class four i liked it there we go uh i think it wasn't far off actually to be fair i think it was about six about six maybe that horse but anyway didn't matter didn't put it up on the channel and it didn't didn't do anything so that was all right <laughs> but there you go all right so let's get on to um the uh, the bet for wednesday and what my plan is as well is tomorrow night's vid i'm hoping it's going to be a little bit longer a bit rambly because you missed out on the ramble last week i'll also go through all the stats because overall we, we came back we've completed september um in terms of 
whatever it was like a couple of weeks September, but it was 140 quid profit. So I was really pleased with that. If we make 100 quid profit in October, November, December, I think A, the game looks easy, and B, we've righted off the wrongs of January, February, March. But we'll, <laughs> we'll see if it'll be that easy. Uh, brackets, it never will be. Um, okay, here we go. So let me try and remember with this time, because last time I couldn't remember what I was doing here, uh, where, where the horses came from. So 240, Bellystown, uh, Mogwili. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I remember way back this horse, I think like, I'm going to say like two years ago, I'm, she didn't seem to remember this horse, won a nice race for us at the Curra at a decent price at the start of the flat season in 2022. That seems my memory. I may be getting it mixed up, but that's what my memory says. Anywho, um, it's the only horse I'm backing in Ireland for Wednesday. And yeah, on bare form, you'd go that horse is out of form. But actually, the horse just runs much better on soft and heavy going, and it hasn't had that properly for the last few runs. This time of year, soft and heavy going is what it wants. Um, so it's back down to an identical handicap mark, uh, 56, which is what it won off this time last year over course and distance. Um, so there's a big tick from, from that kind of point of view. It's got the regular jockey on, Jessica May. So most people won't, won't be familiar with this. She doesn't ride many rides, but she does ride this horse very regularly. Um, and again, if you look through on the dodgy ground, you know, she, she, she does all right on the horse. So, um, yeah, so I'm not I'm not worried about the fact there's a £10 claim on it because it's the regular £10 claim that has run on the horse well before. So the horse looks out of form, but I don't think it's out of form. I think the horse wants bad ground. It's now got bad ground, and I think you'll see a much better performance. So Mogwilly, 10 to 1. Then we go 420 Nottingham. I wanted, I wanted to have a little bit more look at this Nottingham, and there is I think there is an inspection, so it may well be get pulled out. So if it gets pulled out, then you, you know the leftover four can be a Yankee. But as far as what we're doing now, we, we, I've put that one in. It's one that's passed through a few hands. I've got two in two in the bet like that. There's been a couple of trainers, um, so it's been passed around this horse. But ultimately, Nottingham is a track where it's shown some of its best form. Not last time it ran in Nottingham, because I think it was off a break. Um, but generally speaking, it runs the track at Nottingham well, and it actually is quite ground versatile um, if you go back through. So, yeah, I, I think... I think my wondering is whether this this is sort of down to a, to a, to a nice enough mark now um, where it could capitalise on a reasonable reasonable standard of race at Nottingham because they're all class two because they're series final ones. Um, it has won this season now, Pine Straw. I think it's run four times and ran well twice and terrible twice. Um, so you're not quite sure what you're going to get with it. Um, but yeah, when I went when I went through it, I was like, yeah, the Nottingham form um, over over good softy ground, heavy ground looks fine for it. And actually, there's there was quite a few in there. I was like, wouldn't like the look of that on the dodgy ground. So. I think that's worth chancing. And then we've got the free at Kempton. Um, yeah, I was surprised. I found something in this condition race, the 5.45. Gutsy Girls, one of the two three-year-olds in the race. Um, it's, its best piece of form by a mile was over course and distance, albeit in a handicap race. But if you want a handicap race and you run it well, then, you know, fair enough. Try and step yourself up, up to a conditions race. And there's not really any worldies in this race. There's not lots of, you know, it's not horses you're thinking, well, they really should be running more at like listed race and group class and that kind of stuff. There's like, I said, there's one of a three-year-old. But if you actually just look at bare form of that, that particular performance, it hasn't gone up to a handicap mark equivalent of where I think the performance was. But against these other horses, when, I, when I've sort of literally cross-referenced and done my own ratings for it, it, it came out like it should be a top three horse. So... We're going Gutsy Girl at 12 to 1. Um, and also the fact he's an 8 runner. If he stays 8 runner, that's always a helpful thing because mathematically speaking, your chances of getting the top 3 and 8 runners is uh, is less than 1 in 3, which is unlike most situations that you find in racing. So we'll take that. Then this one looks very punty, the 620 Kempton. And I've, I've done my usual criteria and it came out. I've just, just realised I haven't put my stars on, have I? Keep forgetting. 1, 1, 2, 2, 1. There you go. Uh, so one one two two one. Uh, so Cresta Cat, yeah, it came out as a two star bet. So I was like, well, I'm, you know, the price helps with with pushing up star rating for it. But um, yeah, the last few runs, it's just looks like nothing, has it? Um, and again, a bit like Alpine Stroll, been through a few trainers now with the Moors, um, who uh, incidentally, since they've like, this season with their joint license, haven't managed to turn out a winner at Kempton in nineteen tries. You know, trend figures will, will, will trend factoids uh, will, will will have that against Cresta Cat, and it's out of form. So why do I like it? 
when it its best run <laughs> definitely was at Kempton. Um, so you, you, know, you notice there's a little bit of a theme with some of these today, and it is often a case of mine, but I do look for horses that have run over the course before, um, not necessarily winners, but, but look, run, look and run well. So the best piece of form that horse has had is this. Um, last time they ran it over completely inadequate seven furlongs. It's mile and three, I think it is, for today's for, for, for this Wednesday race. Um, and yeah, I've, I, at the price, I think it's worth worth having a chance. I'm not sure what the betting market's going to do with it. So it's not one that I'm seeing as like, could come in massively short. Um, and equally, wouldn't surprise me if it actually drifted. But I was happy to have 33s um, on Cresta Cap because it, 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 given the fact they've run it over an adequate distance, I think it could bounce bounce back to be a much better performance. So that's in. And then 6.55, I've uh, got a shorty in there, Appeal to Glory. It's another free ride. I keep <laughs> I said the other day in a video, don't really back many free rolls in these open handicaps. And I've got a free roll in the conditions race, a three roll in the handicap. Um, it won last time, um, and there's no reason why the horse won't won't run up to standard or, or keep improving. It was handicap debut, and I'm just surprised it's the price it is. I know there's a couple of others in there that look like they've got a bit of potential to kick on, but that one stood out to me that that, that just yeah, just surprised it wasn't vying for favoritism. So I could easily see that that sort of being like a nine to two five to one you know in the mix of favoritism in in a reasonably open race so appeal to glory is in so the bet is 10 times 20p win doubles 10 times 15p each way trebles five times 15p each way four folds and a 25p each way five fold one pound win singles on all the short ones and we'll have a 75p each way single on cresta cat um if you want to do a canadian or a super yankee then you knock yourselves out um, but that's the way that I'm configuring as since I've come back from a break, five horse bet on the channel. I'd rather have win doubles, have a little bit more in the five fold just in case. Um, but yeah, and then, then the, the each way trebles in the four fold um, and it comes up to a nice round figure. So it's 12.50 as you bet. Sky are best. There's a couple of races there in extra place. And then next best jointly. And it's mainly down to this 240 Bellystown. Not all bookies are four. You've got 365, Paddy, Betfair, Unibet, Betfred, Betway, Boyle Sports. At the time of making this video, 365 was standout price on a couple of them. So you, you, there's definitely, you can get better prices on some than I've put out there. Um, some of them, it is literally they're one of like three or four bookies offering that price. But I've tried to be a little bit uh, a little bit even fairer to, uh, today. I think there's, there's a few where there's three bookies offering a better price than what I put there with the major ones. But I'm happy to take those prices I've written there and as far as what I'm recording for channel stats. As a reminder, I take the price. So I, all of the horses I take, I take the price. I'm not playing bog. I play the night before. You know, it's not something you can do these days. You know, it used to be commonplace and get bog the night before. The best price guaranteed. I take the price because the vast majority of the horses I back will shorten. Some of them absolutely i know will get much much shorter and and you know not specific to be fair not specifically today but lots of days i'm back in horses knowing that they're going to be much much shorter at the off um and that comes just from from years of experience of reading betting markets understanding the activity of the average punter to know where the money goes um and likewise to know in the morning for instance when some bit more of the shrewdy money goes on where that might lie as well so I have a fair read about where most horses that I back will go in the market. The majority will get shorter. The point being is to to obtain the value, uh, then then I'm taking the price. That's what I'm doing. So if I actually looked at all of the races, uh, let's say two o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, I might have a completely different read and I could actually come up with five different horses for the star system and some might even be in the same race. These are the five that have made the star system the night before. It will vary. So... You never can quite work out and tell what 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 would and wouldn't have made a star system a star system bet in hindsight. I always look at results. I always look at the big price um, framers and winners to try and influence what I'm doing going forward to see if I can find patterns and reasons why those horses finish where they are. Oftentimes, and certainly in the moment, and probably more than I used to, I'm walking away from more of the inconsistent profile horses, um, the ones that you know 50% of the time they run in the frame and 50% they don't. Um, so I'm trying to walk away from some of those and, and have a few more solid bets. But that is it. All right, that was already 15 minutes. All right. Um, so tomorrow, even expect an even longer one. We'll do a bit of a deep dive into some of the results from September. I'll also give you hopefully some stats around 
how the star systems perform since we've been back in terms of wind uh, frame and strike rate that kind of stuff um, and yeah that is what I got and um, possibly rambling about some other stuff who knows all right uh, that is me I'll be back then for Thursday night would be the, the plan no Wednesday night I'm getting a day ahead of myself these are when these are Wednesday's bets aren't they right Wednesday's bets I'll be back potentially Wednesday night for Thursday's bets that's not the ramble video that's the one after isn't it that's Thursday night <sighs> this week isn't going as quick as it usually does I think that's what it is um so yes, if after me uh, completely confusing myself and you, you still got faith, you feel free to do what you want with my tips. They're free. They'll always be free. You do what you want with them. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>